So let's go ahead and try to learn how slants work with isometric paper. And so let's start with this one. We'll do the activity ones maybe later. You'll try these on your own, hopefully. But let's start with this top corner, and I'll go up here towards the top of my isometric paper and say that's my top corner. And just like before in our notes, let's go ahead and say one square is one square. And with this, later on when it's giving you numbers, you can you know multiply it by four or whatever. But for now, if this goes three, we'll go three. So we'll go down and to the left. I'm sorry. Well, this is the forward direction. This direction we know is the forward direction. That is three. So one, two, three. And so it starts super simple. And then it goes down for one, two, three, four. And what I like to do is I like to do all the boxed parts that I can do first. So from the same corner, for example, you'll notice that it goes to the right too. But then some slants happening. I don't want to draw that slant yet. I do know, though, that from there it goes back three again, and then it connects to finish off a face with a width of two. Okay. And then down here I can see that it goes to the right three more. So one, two, three. And then it goes back two, so one, two. And then it goes up some direction at both of these, or up some amount, I should say, not direction, up some amount. But we don't know how high it goes up. We just know that it goes up. We'll figure that out in a second. But here, from this corner, it goes to the right three more, so one, two, three. And then we got a face here. We know it's one square tall and one square deep, so one, one. And then, of course, down one and forward one finishing off that face. And so if you notice, this corner and this corner are connected by a slant. And so all we need to do to create that slant is pull out a handy dandy ruler or some sort of straight edge. Any straight edge would work. I mean, you could use a piece of paper if you really wanted to. But I'm going to connect those two corners with my pencil. So I'm going to make it where I can see the outline of both of those corners over my ruler. And then I'm just going to draw that straight edge and so okay we got that first slant now the next slants we'll add in a second first i need to draw what i know my boxed edges and so if you look super closely at this shape i can see that it's just a little bit taller than three so i'm going to go about three and a quarter squares so this is one two three and i'm going to go about a quarter of the way up the next one and i'm going to do the exact same thing with this so one two three and then just a little bit past it and these should end at the same height and so I should get a depth line going here so one two it still goes across parallel to my depth but it's a little bit higher than that line okay and then I can see that these two corners are also connected by a slant so I'm going to go ahead and connect those two corners I'm going to make it where I can barely see those corners and then I'll just connect it with one straight line and then lastly i can see that this corner and this corner are also connected by a straight edge and so i'll go ahead and connect that and so if you go ahead and draw the boxed parts the measurements that you know first the slants don't really necessarily have measurements through themselves although they do in a roundabout way it makes your life a lot easier when doing these slanted shapes so Playing it safe, drawing the box parts first is usually the way to go with these.